Good morning. Well, it's nice to have Linda back out of retirement. Thank you for playing. Yes, you can applaud for that. That's yay. Okay, now I have, let's get the uh, less than great news out of the way. Lowell Knobloch joined the church triumphant last night. 98. Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he was a cool guy. Huh? So we don't know anything about services. I was talking to his son last night, so we will probably do something on or around Labor Day weekend. They have lots of family that they're trying to get in town. So when we know, you will know. Now, our administrator is going to be on vacation this week. So don't be calling the office yelling when something's not right. It may, <laughs> we may not be operating with our usual peak efficiency, but we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Okay. Now this may take a while, so let's get the microphone ready. Who all is visiting? Let's start with this side so we don't, so we don't trip over each other. There's one. You look like you're here for Patty Maxine and Laverne. Oh, Roger. And Pat. Marcel. Hi, I'm Pidge. We're friends of Cindy and Al. There you go. Here to, here to, yeah, that's right. Well, we're glad you're here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hi, we have our daughter, Nicole, and her husband, Edwin, here from the Chicago area. Wow, very nice. Okay, is that it for, for this side? Okay, now let's move over to this side. Oh, look, now this, this is, oh, well, okay, we're going to get the little humans first, then we'll back up. They're okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely, rock on, that's, that's great. I have with us our second set of uh, great-grandchildren here today. We've got our uh, granddaughter, Brianna and her husband, Brandon, and our great-grandchildren. We've got Charlotte, who is, was baptized at this church. Yay! And Connor, and we have the two twins, Bryn and Emerson. <laughs> Boy, I, I thought They're they... They're from Oak Park, Illinois. I thought they looked a lot alike. There you go. And, well, and wait, and visiting from uh, west of here is my former dean. Ooh, who, yes, deans actually get to go on vacation and play golf, too. So tell, <laughs> tell us who you where are you and where play? you're from. Uh, Rick and Kathy Roberts uh, from Mount Juliet, Tennessee, and pastor at St. John's in Nashville. For, for low these many decades. For these many decades. And 21 years ago and about three months ago, I uh, interviewed with St. John's call committee. And preached yeah. at this church. That's so yeah. cool. So well, so well nice welcome back. You don't, you don't have to wait 21 years to come back. You can let me know and we'll go play golf. I'd, Man, I didn't know you were coming. So. All right. We good? Okay. Uh, let's see. What else have we got in the, I think that's, I don't have. Oh, I was asked to tell you, okay, if you're interested, the table talk thing that is our adult catechism class continues on. Uh, if you haven't made the first couple, you can enter at any point, leave at any point. Uh, Monday is going to be Ten Commandments. So if you would like to uh, come in, bring a sack lunch, and we'll hang out from 1130 till, till we get tired. So probably 1145. But yes, sir. Oh. Sit. Whoa. Okay, well, we can't. We can't sing to you till you get to be 90, but we'll tell you happy birthday. In this crowd, boy, yeah, we'd be singing all the time. So. 
We save it for the big ticket. Any, anything from the body for the sake of good order. Oh, I do have one note on the service. It's sort of a happy accident. We have um, in the psalm, as we go through here, we usually do it uh, responsibly, but for some reason we have all skate on the last verse. So where, it, where you're bolded on that, you'll see it when you get to the slide. Everybody gets to sing on that last verse, so... We, we ran into all kinds of trouble last night. Poor Saturday night. They're always the test drive for everything. They're like, what do we do? And I said, I don't know. I don't think that fast on my feet. So that's what we're doing. If there is nothing else, as you are able, I invite you please to stand for the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. We confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, Forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Jesus. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, God, merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Start over. Now we're okay. I'm wearing new shoes now. I'm going to walk all over this land and tell the world that Jesus saves. I'll go where he leads me, wherever that may be, and I'll tell the world that Jesus saves. The book says, put on the armor of the Lord with the field of faith before you. The word of the living God, your only soul. Let your feet be shod with the gospel of peace and understanding. And go to all the world 
and preach his word. And it's all with God's own power that overcomes the devil's slaving arrows. I go with my tongue to make free to speak his word. And I'll thank you for these new shoes that take me where he leads me. I'll call the world that he is Lord of Lords. I'm wearing new shoes now. I'm going to walk all over this land and tell the world that Jesus saves. I'll go where he leads me, wherever that may be. And I'll tell the world that Jesus saves. I'll go where he leads me, wherever that may be. And I'll tell the world that Jesus saves. And I'll tell the world that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. We look forward to Patty Maxine and Laverne. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from old of things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. 
Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not of his own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For the hopes for what we, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. Slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? And he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. At the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. The disciples approached him, saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels. They will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, you may be seated. Well, I was going to take you down the rabbit hole of old game shows. You know, what's my line and to tell the truth. You remember those? 
Yeah, well, I was getting confused with Arlene Francis and Kitty Carlisle, so I figured I would abandon that track in favor of rocks. I like rocks. I understand rocks. Rocks stay where you put them. Rocks do not talk back. Rocks are easy to identify. You whack them with a shovel. And, yep, that's a rock. I tell you all this because I am not a particularly gifted gardener. I tend to employ the cleaner is better approach to cultivated ground. Just take it back to bare ground and everything's neat and tidy. Sometimes there are problems with that approach. We had a garden when we lived in Galveston. At least we did it first. Actually, it was just a backyard with a whole lot of plants. I think there was a bench there for a while. It kind of got covered up. Weeds, you know. So I thought I would go out and be helpful. Amy and her mother had planted all sorts of things out there and I was going to go make sure you could see all those things. After I got done with several hours of hard work, Amy's mother said, What happened to the lantana plants I had growing by the fence? Oh, no. <laughs> I was not allowed to weed after that without supervision. In my defense, lantana is not a particularly distinctive plant. It's very tricky to tell the difference between new lantana and, say, a weed. Which is probably why I prefer rocks to plants. No confusion. But in my zeal to be helpful, I jumped right to the rip them out by the roots step, which is step two of the gospel gardening technique. In Matthew 13, Jesus lays out an interesting parable, confusing, though it may be, at least confusing for the disciples who have to come after class and get the Cliff Notes version. Explain to us this parable, thereby converting the parable into an allegory. The parable is pretty straightforward, but then again, so is weeding if you know what you're doing. You got farmer, field, wheat, weeds. Not terribly tricky, except wheat, like lantana, is fairly nondescript when it first arrives on the scene. All those weedy roots and weedy roots are growing in there pretty close together. So if you start yanking stuff out, you lose a lot of wheat. Personally, I feel akin to the slaves in Jesus' parable, soon to be an allegory. And if you're wondering, a parable is a simple story that illustrates a moral lesson. An allegory has to be explained. It reveals a hidden meaning behind the words. So it makes a big difference who is interpreting in the explanation of the allegory. But anyway, the slaves. The slaves in this gospel gardening technique start off with blaming the victim. Hey, didn't you plant good seed there? What's with all these weeds? Yes, the seed was fine. Weeds just happen. So then comes my favorite part. You want us to go out and rip it up? No. Yes, you could get the field back to bare ground and have everything all neat and tidy, but you lose everything in the process. But that's us, right? We want to help poor old God because poor old God can't figure this out without our help. Let us go out there and we'll do the weeding for you because we know what needs to be taken out. Right? We're pretty sure we're the wheat. So everything that don't look like us, it needs to go. Step three, however, is stand down. Do nothing. Don't help. 
We do not make ourselves more wheatly by weeding our neighbors. We hurt them, we hurt our community, and we end up hurting ourselves. So just do nothing. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together and God will figure it out. Because step four is the angels in this little parable are the reapers. Not you, not me, not them, the angels. Our job is simply to try not to make things worse. St. Matthew and St. Paul and St. John have different approaches to this gardening conundrum. Matthew allows for mutual growth. Matthew is the Hippocrates of his day. Do first, do no harm. Paul, however, takes a slightly different approach. We're all weeds. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We don't make ourselves more holy by ragging on our neighbor. We don't turn ourselves into wheat by ripping our neighbors out by the roots. That's not our job. Never was, never will be, though we really want it to be. John sidesteps the whole deal. He decides to go back a little farther and look at the big picture in terms of crucifixion and resurrection. Don't worry about it. When I am lifted up, says Jesus. I will draw all people to myself. So don't worry about who's a weed and who's a wheat. In the fullness of time, I will bring everyone to me. In the economy of God, nothing is wasted. So three takeaways, at least for me. We don't make ourselves worthy by being hateful. We just make ourselves annoying. We don't turn ourselves into wheat by declaring someone else to be a weed. We just become hypocritical. And we don't make the garden better by ripping out plants that we cannot identify. We set ourselves in opposition to the gardener. Let God's plants grow in all their amazing diversity and difference. Baptismal waters enliven, empower, and enhance each and all, making our life and growth possible. Thanks be to God. Amen.
local church, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this point, we will dedicate our prayer shawls. Sisters and brothers, we give thanks to God and we seek God's blessing as we set apart these prayer shawls to the glory of God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, creator of the universe, for you have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children. and You have invited us to praise you with lives of love, justice, and joy. We give you thanks for all the hands which have been at work to create these shawls. We pray for your blessing upon them as we set them apart this day. May they be a reminder that in baptism we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ and nothing separates us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. To you, O God, be all glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers of intercession. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, we offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. O oh God, you call your church to announce the gospel of reconciliation and truth both near and far. Guide your church as it seeks your wisdom and shares it, trusting your spirit bearing witness among us. Hear us, O oh God. You brought forth all creation and called it good. Direct policymakers to protect lands and seas. Bring rain to sun-parched fields and protect areas impacted by natural disasters. Hear us, O God. You desire peace among nations and peoples. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. Guard our neighborhoods from hatred. Watch over police officers and firefighters. Teach us to advocate for those who live in fear. Hear us, O oh God. You are gracious and merciful, comforting those who suffer any affliction. We continue to lift up those people who have requested our prayers. Betty A. Jude D. Bill H. Paul K. Pastor Joe. Dwayne S., Glenn S., Rachel S., David S., Grace T. Sustain your people living with HIV AIDS. Provide shelter for all who are unhoused and release any who are unjustly imprisoned. Hear us, O God. You name each of us as your children. Guide our hospitality ministry to welcome all. Our education ministry to equip us for faithful living and our social ministry to enact the gospel in our community. Hear us, O oh God. 
We pray for this nation, our President Joseph Biden, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee and his wife Maria, Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster, and all first responders. God, in your mercy, you send faithful people to proclaim freedom from bondage and to renew your church. Encourage us by the witness of the faithful departed especially Lowell Knobloch and Brigida of Sweden, whom we commemorate this day. Help us, through their witness, to live in that same hope. Hear us, O God. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to lift silently now before God's throne of grace those cares and concerns and celebrations which you carry in your lives this day. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. Silently, aloud, and those prayers for which we have no words. We lift them all in the name of the one who reconciled creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. As you are able, I invite you please to stand. Peace of the risen Lord is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation. Multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord is with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
As often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, His death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return. Return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom. Courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age. That rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through Him, with Him, in Him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. You may be seated. commuting in your pews that the words you hear spoken at this altar are spoken also for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. I would also remind you that if you are visiting that our communion table is open. It is not the possession of the church. It is the possession of our Lord Jesus. And it is Christ who invites you here and it is Christ who meets you here. So I would invite you then to come forward at the direction of the ushers. The body of Christ.
Please stand. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you this day until the end of the age. Amen. Christ Lutheran Church, who are we? Christ Lutheran Church is a caring community of the baptized people of God, saved by the gift of grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and sent into the world to share the good news of God's love. Go in peace, share the harvest.